Hey, what is up my dudes? Today we're gonna be learning how to build a counter app. It's super simple, but you're gonna learn a whole bunch. We're gonna be doing this in Swift 3.0 using Xcode 8. And yeah. All right guys, open Xcode, hit create new Xcode project. Uh, select single view application and name it counter app. Actually, name it dope counter app. Or maybe even dope sick counter app. All right, so after you've created it, go ahead and click your main storyboard. This uh, communicates with the view controller.swift, which is a file that you're able to manipulate your storyboard code with. So in your storyboard, go ahead and put a label in here. Name that label count and make it pretty big and put the font size up to like 31. I don't know, 35. Get a button in there. Do the same exact thing with that button, but call it start counting. Uh, 35. And make it big. All right, so this, uh, this counter app isn't very dope. It doesn't really do anything. So go ahead and hit the assistant editor up here. That will pop open your view controller .swift. And if you didn't see that, uh, assistant editor is this little double circle action deal going on here. Control drag, start counting here. And name it start, or just name it button, name it whatever you want. And uh, do that again, but this time go ahead and for collection, hit action. What that's going to do is that's going to give us a uh, a block of space that will allow us to run some code whenever that's clicked. So put it down here just for best practice and connect the count label here so we can actually change it on the screen. Uh, okay, so just name it count label and go ahead and connect that. And in our, our button, we're going to want to write the code that actually stops and starts at counting. So whenever we count, whenever we start counting, we want it to add one. So what we're going to want to do is write a function here. And if you type in func, it should have this, this top one. Just hit tab and it will have a piece of skeleton code that you can fill in. Name it count or counter or something. And for parameters, just delete that. We don't need it. For return type, just put void. And what void does is it returns nothing. So it will do something, the code will do something, but it won't give anything back to what called that function. So if you don't understand that, read, read up on void or return, return values. Um, so yeah, uh, now that we got that all set up, we're going to want to put some other variables up here. We're going to want to make a, uh, we're going to want to make a variable called count to keep track of our count. That's going to be an int. And uh, then we're going to want counting to keep track of our counting. That will be a Boolean. Uh, it's a P, that's supposed to be a capital B. Okay, Boolean equals false because we're not counting. And var timer, timer. That's going to be a timer object. That's going to help us keep track of when to call this counter function, which will add a count to our deal. So go ahead and now that we've got all that set up, we're going to want to set up a piece of code in here that says if counting, we're going to want to stop counting or yeah, we're gonna to wanna to stop counting. So this will be the code to stop us from counting. Else if not counting, then we're gonna to wanna to start counting, right? When this button's clicked. So first thing we're gonna to wanna to do in uh, start counting is we're gonna to wanna to go, um, let's see, button.title label, or set button.set title. Go ahead and for that, just put stop counting because we want it to change to stop counting after we've uh, after we've hit start counting. So go ahead and just hit dot normal for that. Uh, you don't need to worry about what that is. It's just a control state. You can read up on it. Uh, go ahead and after that, we're gonna wanna start the timer, right? So go ahead and go timer. We're referencing our timer variable we declared up there and hit timer with a capital T dot scheduled timer and hit the last one, cause that or the first one, cause that will allow us to run a function after so many seconds or minutes or hours or years. So go ahead and 
put time interval as one, so that'll be one second. Target's gonna be self. Um, that's just uh, telling us that our code is in this view controller. Go ahead and for user or for selector, that's gonna be the the function we want to run. So just type in hashtag selector and in parentheses counter. Now we'll run this function down here every one second because that's what our time interval is. If you set it the time interval to two seconds, it will run counter every two seconds. So for user info, just hit nil and repeats is true because we want it to keep calling it after every second rather than just once. And that's gonna be a lowercase true, my B, my B. All right, so go ahead and in counter, we're gonna wanna actually have it do something instead of nothing. So count plus equals one, that's gonna increase our count variable one every every second and go ahead and count label dot text is equal to string count and what that's going to do is that's going to tell us actually we're going to want to delete that all right print or uh, quotations count And put count in here. Basically, what we're telling it is we are we are um, telling count that we want it to be a string, so we can put it in that count thing, and we want it re to retain to keep that count, so it can look all cool and stuff. And uh, yeah, that's how you do that. So after that, what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to go to here and uh, let's actually test it real quick and see if it's working. Let's so go ahead and hit run. And make sure you run it on iPhone 7 for now, since that's what we have set up here. In the future, you can set up auto layout and make it look all pretty for every device, but we're not going to do that in this video. Uh, so yeah, once it's up and running, uh, we can see that we are now counting. All right, so that's working. Let's make it uh, better, though, and uh, let's have it stop counting. Because stop counting doesn't do anything. Okay, so go ahead and in here, we're going to want to, actually in here, we're going to want to go counting is equal to false because we want we don't want the computer to think we're, we haven't started counting yet or it will run this again after we hit the button. All right, so go ahead and in here, we're going to go button dot set title start counting and what that does is gonna just basically show on the screen that we that it says start counting so it actually makes sense all right so go ahead and go timer dot invalidate what that's gonna do is it's gonna kill the timer object so it won't be calling counter every one second anymore all right so go ahead and hit counting equals true I don't know why I keep saying hit just type counting equals true all right and uh, we're actually going to want to reverse that. My bad. So it knows that it's counting and it knows that it's not counting. All right. So if it's counting, after this has been set, if it's counting, we're going to want to run this. And that's going to invalidate it and that's going to shut down the, uh, the counting. Um, and yeah, that should be it. Go ahead and build and run it and let's see if it's working. All right, go ahead and hit start counting. We can see that it is now counting, and that's pretty dope. And it actually was before when we tested it. Go ahead and hit stop counting, and look, it's magic, it stops counting. Go ahead and hit start counting again, just so we can test that. And it's counting, wow, that's so dope. And yeah, that's it. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and subscribe. Definitely hit a thumbs up, and yeah, if you want some more quality coding videos, just Stay tuned because it's about to get nutty in here. And I'm out, my dudes. <laughs>